this flight since the 1950s. That's absolutely right, Ronnie. The Space Coast has been the launch pad for some of humanity's greatest spaceflight achievements. In the early 1960s, NASA established the beginnings of the Kennedy Space Center. And in 1961, Alan Shepard became the first American in space, lifting off from Cape Canaveral's Launch Complex 5, the first human spaceflight of Project Mercury. Things really Stage heated one, up. RP-1 load is complete. Confirmation there that we have RP-1 load completion on board Falcon 9. Things really heated up in the 1960s, which saw Florida become the heart of the space race. In 1969, Apollo 11 Saturn V roared off from pad 39A, sending the first humans to walk on the moon. Five more moon landings followed, cementing Florida's role in space exploration. The space shuttle era launched in 1981 with Columbia, pioneering reusable spacecraft and building the International Space Station. And over the next 30 years, 135 space shuttle missions lifted off from Florida. And today, the Space Coast continues to be the home of the busiest spaceport in the world. SpaceX's very first Falcon 9 launch lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral in June of 2010, following the final launch of the Titan IV rocket family from the Cape almost five years earlier. A few years after that, we launched CRS-10 in 2017, the first Falcon 9 mission from Historic Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center. The first launch from pad 39A since STS-135, and the final flight of the space shuttle program with Atlantis in July of 2011. Just three years later, the first commercial spaceflight, commercial human spaceflight mission, Demo-2, launched from the Launch Complex 39A pad in May of 2020. And now history is being made once again, with a rocket launching from Florida. Falcon 9 tanks are pressing for Stromback retract. Confirmation there that Mission Control is prepping for Strongback Retract as we prepare for this landing in the Bahamas. This is also SpaceX's 21st launch of 2025. And as we mentioned, just a few weeks from now, we'll be launching our first human spaceflight mission to a polar orbit, FROM2. And there's the crew at the Booster Monument during a training exercise here in Hawthorne, California. And there is so much more history to be made with SpaceX supporting NASA and its Artemis program Strong to return has started. humans to the moon. There's confirmation that Strongback Retract has started. We're also, of course, targeting launches to low Earth orbit, the space station, deep space, the moon, and of course, Mars. Absolutely, Ronnie. I am super excited for what's to come, and the future looks very, very bright. So right now, we are just about T minus four minutes and 10 seconds away from liftoff, and we're already hearing some great call-outs for mission control. We know the transporter erector, or the TE for short, is currently preparing for retract. And right now, we've got a great view of the clamp arms just around the base of the payload fairing, opening up and preparing for that TE retraction. The TE is a large truss structure that you currently see just to the left of the rocket. And right now, it's preparing to retract just about two degrees away from the rocket. In preparation for full retraction, ahead of liftoff. Now, the TE is also equipped with uh, umbilicals or flexible lines that are used around the vehicle's fluid, power, and telemetry from the ground systems to the rocket and payload until Falcon 9 switches to internal power and clears the pad. You may also hear the TE referred to as the strongback from the launch team, and it definitely does a heavy lifting, a lot of uh, work uh, leading up to launch. Yeah, no kidding. At this point in the countdown, both the first and second stage are nearly fully loaded with one million pounds of rocket-grade kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Both the first and second stages should finish propellant loading about a minute apart from each other. And we are tracking that first stage call out here in just a couple seconds. Now, as you may have noticed, there are white clouds forming around the vehicle. And those clouds are comprised of the chilled gas above the LOX tank that gets vented overboard. Stage one LOX load is complete. And there's that call out for stage load, stage LOX loading complete on the first stage. So those white clouds come from the LOX gas that gets vented overboard to maintain pressure in the tanks as needed. And when that vented oxygen mixes with the warmer outside air, it condenses into the clouds that you see there on your screen. It's always exciting in the lead up to a launch to watch the entire launch pad really come to life. Absolutely. One of the next major milestones we're listening in for will be at T minus 60 seconds, when Falcon 9 will enter startup mode. That means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers will take over the launch countdown. Then just inside of T minus two seconds, we'll light the M1D engines for liftoff. At this time, the payload continues to be healthy and the Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the rocket. Weather is also stage looking- Stage two lock load is complete. And good call out there for stage two lock loading completion. The weather is still looking green, and the range is ready to support our T0 of 621 p.m. Eastern Time. And with that, we're proceeding into the last few minutes of terminal count. So let's listen in.
One of the next visual milestones we're likely to see is going to be the TE LOX line venting. It actually looks like it may have started there on your screen because we're seeing those white clouds of liquid oxygen start to form around the vehicle and get a little bit bigger. Of course, this is totally normal and something something that we count on as part of our gas closeouts, which we just heard announced by Mission Control. Now, coming up in just about 20 seconds from now, we should hear that call out for Falcon 9 being in startup, which will means the vehicle's uh, flight computers will have taken over the launch count. And at the T minus 45 second mark, we should hear the launch director give that final go, no go for launch. Falcon 9 is in startup. It's a good call out there that we're on startup mode for Falcon 9. Launch director, go for launch. And our confirmation from our launch director. So with that, all systems are go for the launch of Falcon 9. Let's sit back and listen in to the final countdown. T minus 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds. T minus ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. Engine full power and lift off. Go Falcon. Go Falcon. Stage one propulsion is nominal. At T plus 30 seconds and counting, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Coming up next, the vehicle will be passing through Max Q which is the point in the mission profile where the vehicle experiences the greatest amount of aerodynamic pressure. Power as and telemetry nominal. Good call out there. As it ascends through the Earth's atmosphere, we should be hearing that call out for Max Q in just about 15 seconds Mach from now. One. And another good call out there. Max Q is, of course, a critical milestone for us here at SpaceX because it is that period of maximum aerodynamic pressure on the rocket during ascent. Max Q and confirmation that we've made it through. So coming up next, we'll have three events happening in quick succession, starting with Miko, followed by Stage Step, and then Second Engine Start One, or SES One for short. Now, Main Engine Cutoff, or Miko, is where all nine Merlin 1D engines shut down in preparation for stage separation, which is where the first stage separates from the second stage. Following that, the MBAC engine on the MBAC second- MBAC started. Good call out there. Following that, the MBAC engine on the second stage will light, which is called out over the nets as Second Engine Start 1, or SES-1. That first engine burn of MVAC will last several minutes and propel the second stage and the payload to orbit. In addition to these three major events, the fairing halves will also separate less than a minute after SES-1. So keep an eye out for all of those on your screen here. We should continue to have great views of our launch today. And of course, we are always listening into Mission Control for the latest nominal and greatest. trajectory. And confirmation there that we're on a nominal trajectory. Now we should be hearing that call out for main engine cutoff in just about 15 seconds from now. Main engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. And there you heard those three callouts back to back, which again were Miko, stage separation, and SES 1. Now, coming up shortly, we should hear a callout for fairing separation. And as mentioned earlier, both payload fairing halves supporting tonight's mission are flight proven, with one half flying for its 22nd time and the other flying for its 14th. Should hear that call out any moment now.
Great views there that we have confirmation of fairing separation. Separation confirmed. And the call out for mission control. We will, of course, be attempting to retrieve these fairing halves again today once they fall back to Earth with our recovery vessel, Bob. Now, at T plus three minutes and 40 seconds into today's mission, the next major milestone coming up just under three minutes from now will be the entry burn of the Falcon 9 booster as it continues on its journey towards our drone ship, which is currently stationed in the Bahamas. To start the entry burn on board stage one, we will relight three of the M1D engines at the bottom of the first stage, which is similar to pumping the brakes on your car. What we're doing is slowing down the vehicle as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. We need to slow down to reduce re-entry forces, which helps us to recover and reuse that first stage. Now, during that entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but it's still moving incredibly fast. And this causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, also known as the rocket's plume, which deposits a layer of soot onto the vehicle's surface or skin. That soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses, and with each flight, the soot builds up a little more on the outside of the vehicle. Of course, at this point in the flight, we have two really exciting things going nominal on. Nominal trajectory. And there's a confirmation from Mission Control that we're on nominal trajectories, which means that everything is going as it should. You hear us use the word nominal a lot here at SpaceX, and that means that things are right on track. If you're interested in following along with the speed and velocity going on with both of our vehicles, you can track the telemetry in the bottom corners of your screen. Again, on the left-hand side of your screen, we're tracking stage one on its way to the Bahamas. And on the right-hand side, we have the MVAC burning up in space. Now here at SpaceX, reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, which enables more investments in critical space infrastructure. The Falcon 9 first stage that will be uh, that is supporting today's mission is flying for its 16th time today. Those payload fairings, which are also supporting tonight's mission, are flight proven with one half flying for its 22nd and the other half flying for its 14th. With that entry burn coming up on stage one, we're going to use the Merlin engines on the first stage again. Those engines are optimized for sea level and achieve about 190,000 pounds of thrust each during ascent and descent. At liftoff, Falcon 9's first stage has the thrust greater than five 747 airplanes at full power. Now the MVAC engine located on the second stage, which is on the right-hand side of your screen, possesses a much wider nozzle and is optimized to 220,500 pounds of thrust in vacuum. Coming up in just about 10 seconds, we'll have the entry burn of that first stage. The landing burn should then follow at about seven minutes and 52 seconds into our mission today. Stage one, entry burn startup. There's confirmation of entry burn startup. Expecting out 10 more seconds on this burn. Stage one, entry burn shutdown. And confirmation of shutdown. And we are already getting some great views on your screen there. And we are hoping that all of you joining us from the ground in the Exumas are going to have a great view. On a nominal trajectory. Great view of landing, too. And there's another call out that everything is headed in the right direction. Now, coming up in just about a minute from now, we should hear that Stage call. Stage one, FTS has saved. Another good call out there. In about a minute from now, we should hear that call out for landing bird startup on the Falcon 9 first stage, which, as a reminder, is on the left hand side of your screen. We're also getting great views of those titanium grid fins that are helping to steer the booster on its way back to Earth. Now, this landing burn will be the final burn of the booster as it descends back to Earth. And as a reminder, it'll Stage be... Stage 2 FTS has saved. Another good call out there. As a reminder, it'll be doing this for the 16th time today. Stage 1, trance on it. And good call out there that Stage 1, the booster on the left-hand side of your screen, is now transonic. Now, coming up in just about 20 seconds, we should see that landing bird start up on the first stage. And just in case you are just joining us today, this is particularly exciting because this is about to be the first international landing of a first stage booster. Stage one, landing bird. And great call out there for landing bird startup. Stage two is in terminal guidance. Of the Falcon 9 first stage. We're now waiting for Falcon 9 to land on Just Read the Instructions, currently off the coast of the Bahamas. Stage 1 landing leg deploy.
Stage one, landing confirmed. And there you heard that call out for successful landing of our Falcon 9 rocket. And you can hear the cheering behind me. Welcome to the Bahamas, Falcon 9. Now, as a reminder, this was the 16th launch and landing for this first stage. And meanwhile, that second stage is on track to complete the rest of its mission today to deliver 23 Starlink satellites to low Earth down. orbit. That will bring to a close our coverage of SpaceX's 21st launch of the year and 234th Starlink mission to date. Today's launch will further increase Starlink's capacity to deliver high-speed, low-latency connectivity across the globe. Streaming, video calls, online gaming, remote working, and more are now possible in even the most remote locations, thanks to the world's most advanced internet system. And we're excited to continue working with the Bahamian government on this mutually beneficial partnership. And we look forward to many more drone ship landings off the coast of the Bahamas for Falcon. To learn more about Starlink, visit Starlink.com. And if you are interested in even more launch coverage, be sure to check out SpaceX.com slash launches and follow us at SpaceX on X for the most up-to-date information. We want to thank the Bahamian government for their partnership. We also want to thank the Eastern Range and the Federal Aviation Administration for their support. And of course, thank you to our viewers for tuning in. We'll see you again real soon.